Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this, well, this laptop is just incredible. After seeing this, you're just gonna want to throw your laptop in the bin, take out a small mortgage, or maybe still a kidney, and save up for one of these. And it's called the ASUS ProArt Studio Book One. And I don't think I've seen anything quite like this before. It really genuinely is exciting, and I think for three main reasons. Firstly, the design, because, well, the bulk of the computer is actually on the back of the screen. The performance with a 9th gen i9 processor, and Nvidia's brand new Quadro RTX 6000 graphics card. It's actually the first laptop in the world to use it. And of course, that screen, which is a color calibrated 15 inch 4K 120Hz display. So, usually when we're talking about ASUS's ProArt range, we're talking about monitors. But here at EFA 2019, I'm in Berlin right now, they're launching a whole range of ProArt laptops, or what they're calling Studio Books. The flagship is the Studio Book 1, but I also really like the Studio Book Pro X, or is it the Pro 10? Either way, we get a 17 inch 16x10 display squeezed into a 15 inch chassis, along with Quadro 5000 graphics and ASUS's signature ScreenPad 2.0. But it has to be that Studio Book 1 that's at the top of my Christmas list this year. And it's funny because when I first saw it, I was a bit confused how the base of that laptop could be so thin and yet have a Quadro graphics card. I mean, surely this would have to be seriously underclocked or throttled or something. But then I saw the thicker screen and I kind of had a bit of a light bulb moment. Why is no one else doing this, it makes so much sense. I mean, we have the likes of the Microsoft Surface Book, which put the processor and the RAM and some other stuff in the tablet screen portion of the laptop, but there's nothing quite like this. And to me at least, it just makes so much sense. I mean, the biggest problem with powerful laptops is cooling. And when you've got all the gubbins below the keyboard and it's sat on a table or on your legs, the airflow isn't great. But by putting it at the back of the screen, and also thanks to this nifty vent that automatically opens up to four and a half degrees, and the titanium vapor chamber cooler, you get much better airflow, better cooling, and therefore hopefully less throttling. And because everything is behind the screen pointing away from you, it should be quieter and also cooler for you, unlike say the Dell XPS 15 with a 99, which just burns your legs off. So the main chassis only houses the keyboard and the 90 watt hour battery. Altogether, it weighs in at 2.9 kilograms or 6.4 pounds, which certainly isn't light, but given the power of this thing, it's pretty impressive actually. But my first thought was, does it topple over because it's so top heavy? Well, actually, ASUS have added ballast to the chassis, so it's surprisingly stable. Plus, they've done a great job with the hinge. I would have thought a few shakes and it would break under the weight of the screen, but it doesn't. So that's pretty cool by itself, but as I say, this is also the first laptop in the world to come with Nvidia's new Quadro RTX 6000 graphics card. If you want to get super nerdy, that means we get 4,608 CUDA cores, 72 RT ray tracing cores, and up to a ridiculous 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. And that's paired with an eight core 16 thread i9-9980HK processor, 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD, although these are all upgradable. It's kind of surprising that they didn't go with Intel Xeon processors, which you tend to find in higher end workstations, but bottom line is, even if all those specs and numbers go over your head, this is, I believe, gonna be the world's most powerful laptop, or at least the most powerful laptop that consumers like me and you can actually buy. I mean, this is meant for 3D rendering, 8K video editing, playing Minecraft with ray tracing enabled, you know, stuff most computers wouldn't be able to handle. And while the Quadro card is optimized for creators and developers, it's still gonna be a powerhouse for gaming. Now, I wish I could benchmark this properly for you guys, but unfortunately, because it's an engineering sample with super early drivers, and it's just not finished, so any results wouldn't do it justice. I'll save all that for my full review. And then we have the display. 15.6 inches, 4K, 120Hz, 100% Adobe RGB, 97% DCI-P3, Pantone certified, and with a Delta E of less than one. As for I.O., well, this won't take long because we get three Thunderbolt 3 ports and a power in. That's it. No SD card reader, not even a headphone jack, which is a bit surprising, actually. Still, everything can be done through the Thunderbolt 3 ports, but like the MacBook Pro, if you're going to buy this, then you're going to have to be ready for that dongle life. For a laptop this powerful, the power brick is actually surprisingly small, and it uses a custom USB-C cable that you plug into the power port on the left of the screen. So as you can probably tell, I'm genuinely really excited about this. It's definitely overkill for what I do, which is basically just 4K video editing for YouTube, but I would still love to have that kind of performance, and really it could be a full proper desktop replacement as well. 
The big question though, how much do you reckon this thing is gonna cost? Well, if you take into account the Quadro 6000 card alone, costs $4,000 retail from Nvidia, I'd guess between six and $7,000. But what do you think of the StudioBook Pro 1? Could you use something like this? And do you reckon it'll be able to play Crisis? What do you think? Maybe you like low settings? Thank you so much for watching guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.